Good morning. How bold does a prophet need to be? Today we're trying to follow the chronological sequence of events in Jeremiah, and that takes us back now to chapter 22, the first seven verses. And here's what it says. By the way, you might hear some rain in the background. Thus says the Lord, go down to the house of the king of Judah, and there speak this word, and say, hear the word of the Lord, O king of Judah, you who sit on the throne of David, you and your servants and your people who enter these gates. Thus says the Lord, execute judgment and righteousness, and deliver the plundered out of the hand of the oppressor. Do no wrong and do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, or the widow, nor shed innocent blood in this place. For if you indeed do this thing, then shall enter the gates of this house, riding on horses and in chariots, accompanied by servants and people, kings who sit on the throne of David. But if you will not hear these words, I swear by myself, says the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. For thus says the Lord to the house of the king of Judah, You are Gilead to me, the head of Lebanon. Yet I surely will make you a wilderness, cities which are not inhabited. I will prepare destroyers against you, every one with his weapons. They shall cut down your choice cedars and cast them into the fire. So God has new instructions for his servant Jeremiah. You know, kind of wonder, how did the prophet feel when new instructions came in? But uh, God sends him down. He says, go to the king's house and you prophesy right there. So Jeremiah does it. Now four commands, just four, are made to the king. And here's what they are. We read them already. Number one, to dispense justice and right rulings. Number two, to deliver the plundered from the oppressor. Number three, to do no wrong and no violence to the widow, the fatherless, or the stranger. And number four, simply not to shed innocent blood. Now, it's interesting. These are all things that the king should already be doing since he's king. These are all just normal things for the kingdom. And these are normal things you might already notice for us. These are things that we should be doing and things that we should not be doing. We should be doing the right and not the wrong. And the same measure is there for the king and also for uh, all, the, all the people, all of us. Now, for Jeremiah to go to the king's house and, and speak these things there uh, loudly so that the king could hear it, this was uh, sort of like a public insult to the king. You just don't do that. But God sent him, and so, yes, he would go and do it. And, and obviously, of course, what do you think Jeremiah did? We all know. He, he, this is the very thing he did. Kaboom. God says it. Jeremiah does it. So this was a lot like an insult to the king. It basically said in public, the king's not doing these four righteous things that he should be doing as your king. Not only that, but he's spe speaking at the king's house. In fact, who else would have influence? Who could possibly reach the king if the prophet can't reach him and the other people can't reach him? Well, the, the king's family has sort of got, uh, got a stake in all this too, right? Because if God sends judgment against the king, they, his primary counselors, his family members, and so on, they might all come out badly as well. So there's another incentive going on here, too. This is one more opportunity. Maybe there's somebody in the mix that can reach the heart of the king so that he'll do what's right. God will do whatever he needs to do to bring repentance to the heart of the king and to your heart and mine. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you that there's not one law for the king and one law for the rest of us, but that these are all the right kind of things, the kind of things that we should be doing ourselves. Uh, insofar as we face similar situations. Lord, doing right all the time is your plan. Not some of the time, not part of the time, not 95% of the time, but Lord, all the time. Bless us, Lord, and help us to be right with you. Show us the pathway, help us to be right so that we're right in our heart with Jesus. And Lord, as your prophet was faithful, help us to be faithful too. Morality doesn't change. Lord, show us the path the path of Jesus, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. A prophet needs to be bold enough to go wherever God sends him and with whatever message he sends him to deliver. And whatever God has for you in your life today, be bold and do exactly what God shows you. You'll be blessed. Have a wonderful day serving the Lord Jesus.